Namaste everybody. So we are doing exercise two. In exercise two, we are essentially observing the body. The self is observing the body. And that is to say, the consciousness is observing the material. So we did exercise one earlier in which we observed the self. That is the consciousness was observing the consciousness. And now the consciousness is observing the material. In step one, we try to observe the two distinct realities, the self and the body. We could see that I am able to observe the self, myself, through the activities of the self. And I am able to observe the body through the sensation that I receive from the body. And this is something to keep investigating that I am not the body. I and body are two distinct, different realities. In step two, we observed the exchange of information between the self and the body. And we could see that there is no material exchange there between me and the body. I give instructions to the body and I read sensations that I receive from the body as per the need, isn't it? In step three, we try to observe the decision maker while giving instructions to the body or while reading the sensations from the body, who is the decision maker? We tend to assume many times that there are certain things which are happening by themselves, the movements of the body that I'm doing. But when we observe it closely, we find that no, there's a decision making involved there and I am the decision maker. This is something that we are trying to observe in step three. In step four, we are trying to observe or we were trying to observe that I am not the sensation. I am not a part of the sensation. Neither the sensation is there in me. I am different from the sensation. The sensation is there in the body and I am reading the sensation. And I am at a distance from the sensation. Isn't it? Now, observing this, we could also observe that I am at a distance from the body. And here the distance is not the physical distance. So I and body being at the same point in this existence are at a distance from each other because I'm outside the body and the body is outside me. Neither I am a part of the body nor the body is a part of mine. I am at a distance from the body. Now, doing all this, we get more clarity about the existence of the conscious unit and the material unit, the self and the body. And we are also able to see how the two coexist, isn't it? And when we look at the nature, we see that there are two kinds of realities. One is the conscious entity and the other is the material entity. So studying myself and studying the body, we are able to study the two kinds of realities in this nature. So we have to sharpen our observation. We have to keep on observing. We'll see that I'm the observer, whether I'm observing the self or the body. And it's only a matter of my priority, my decision making, whether I'm able to observe or not. So this is something that we had been doing so far. Now in step five, which we introduced yesterday, we are trying to look at the interaction of self with body and the world outside. And we could see that there are three sources of sensation. What is the effect of the behavior of the other, which first reaches my body, sound of words, touch, etc. And due to that, there are sensations in the body. The second source is the situation outside, a physiochemical change, maybe a heat or cold, and it has an effect on the body. And then there are sensations in the body because of this. And then there are events happening within the body, like pain in the head, rapid heartbeat. And due to that, there are sensations in the body. So these are three sensations or sources of sensations. And we were observing it yesterday. We'll continue to observe it and we'll take your questions 
regarding your observation how will i understand that uh, it's not done something is not done by the brain uh, self and not by the brain there i needed some clarity here <coughs> okay didi now here uh, basically you have to observe yourself and you have to observe your being in existence so once you are able to observe this then all the doubts get dispelled because whatever we have learned about the brain from the books is a kind of information that we have those informations are quite useful now we can go through that set of information also but at the same time unless the person who is conducting research there and trying to share information with us if he or she has not been able to observe the self then there will be some confusion there will be some mixing of information there which will not have clarity so we can get some information about the brain but essentially ultimately you have to be a direct observer of the self so one thing would be observe the activities in the body okay and which are sensations and try to see whether these sensations are there in you or they are away from you outside you the second thing would be observe the activities which are going on in the body sorry in the self and try to see how these are different from the body in this process you are also going to observe the interaction of the self and the body and you can in addition also observe your being different from the body completely so that would mean that you are able to see that you are essentially not the body okay you are an entity you are a unit which is there coexisting with the body and your being is not dependent on the body okay so you are there at the same point in existence where the body is there but you are not the body and you can also shift yourself from the body to some extent to be able to observe that the body is something different and you are different so few thing that i said here like we can observe the body you can observe the self right you can also observe the being of the self different from the body so while observing the body and the self you are primarily observing the activities in the body and the self but in addition you can also observe your being different from the body and at the same time you can also gather information about the activities of the brain and you can explain all those things which have been said about the brain based on this understanding of coexistence of self and body now on a rational basis also we can get to see that i cannot be merely the body okay on a rational basis also otherwise why we are working so hard what would be the net outcome of our whole life if i am only the body and the body is just like a bio int like a plant which is there and after some point after some time it is going to be a part of the rest of the nature so on a rational basis also we can clarify to ourselves that i cannot be merely the body and then we can also be a direct observer g so there is one question vishal ji what is consciousness or chaitanya so the self the self is the consciousness the self is the chaitanya rinda ji is saying in anesthesia using chemicals interaction between self and body is cut down is it not surprising no nothing surprising about it so it has some physiochemical effect on the body and the brain it is quite possible coma is a natural process when person is under anesthesia there is no interaction with self and body yeah, so the interaction with the self and the body here again we'll see that uh, the there is some physical part to it which is there in the body and there is a decision making involved in me so even if i decide to read the sensation but the sensation is not teaching me 
so I will not be able to give that sensation. And this anesthesia, essentially what it does, it uh, slows down or cuts the interaction of uh, one part of the body with the other, particularly the brain. So for example, if mm -hmm. the hand is giving anesthesia and whatever operation is being done in the hand, that information will not reach the brain. So I will not feel the pain. So this is quite possible. Ji. How to observe beyond imaging? This is what we're trying to do. In fact, in this whole discussion, if you see, we are trying to observe the self as a self, as a conscious entity, and the body as a material entity. And in this process, we are trying to observe the whole nature as it is, isn't it? And I am the observer. And I have some activities which are dormant at the moment. So I'm trying to activate those dormant activities. The activity of contemplation, the activity of understanding, the activity of realization, I'm trying to activate them. Presently, they are dormant. And why they are dormant? Because I have not assigned the priority to activate these activities because other things have demanded <laughs> more important to me. Isn't it? So this is something that I need to do. So when we say, when we have this workshop that right understanding is the first priority. So putting it right understanding at the first priority is essential. In general, it so happens that the body or the things which are fulfilling for the body become more important for us. And then we are also carrying some assumptions, some preconditions within assuming ourselves to the body. And then our activities get influenced by that. And then we are not able to assign the right priority. So many times what we have been saying that I am the seen and I am the seer. So where is the hindrance? The hindrance only lies in my priority, my uh, own desire, thought and expectation. And I have to work upon that. G. Without anesthesia, can't we make the same effect with self? Now, this is something to do with the physiochemical entity. Okay, it could be some kind of skill. Those skills are also available. When uh, you can influence the activity of one part of the body with respect to the other part of the body, this is possible. But this becomes a kind of skill. Why to go for all this? Essentially, you see, the objective is to be in a state of happiness and continuity isn't it and for that we have, for that we have to understand the self we have to understand the body we have to understand the space we have to understand the whole existence now this is the way we many times get diverted so why to go for learning some skills which are to do with the physiochemical body and which are not going to essentially help me in right understanding so we'll make our program accordingly I can't see any more hand raised. So a good discussion took place where we try to clarify about the existence of the self and the body. In the beginning, what we are saying about step five is that here we are trying to observe the three sources of sensation. So their activity is taking place inside the body and then the body is interacting with the rest of nature. So it could be either in terms of behavior with the other person or the physiochemical changes in the world outside, isn't it? And these become three sources of sensation for me. And I read these sensations as per my choice. So you can see that none of these effects reach the self directly. They are having effect on the body in the form of sensation. I decide to read these sensations or not to read these sensations. I read and taste only those sensations that I consider important. I read and taste only as and when I consider it necessary. So we'll now observe how the sensations in the body are used by the self. So we have been reiterating about this and I'll say that this is something as a task for me as well as you. We all have to observe this particularly with more clarity. 
so that the understanding of the self is there, the understanding of the body is there. So the way I am there, the way the body is there, and the way I am coexisting with the body, these three things have to be observed. And when we are able to understand this clearly, you we'll see that by simple reflection, we are also able to understand the nature. Okay. We are able to understand the activities in the nature and we are able to uh, make out the conscious activities and the material activities. So in that process, we have to keep on observing the sources of sensation. We have to keep on observing how I read the sensations how I send information to the body. So this will be the homework for today. So first of all, try to make out the sources of sensation. Are there only these three kinds or there could be even more? In fact, if you try to analyze these three sources also, you can further categorize them into multiple categories, isn't it? So try to observe. Try to observe every information that you're getting from the body. Earlier, we're trying to observe the sensations in the body. And now we're trying to observe the sources of sensation. So somebody comes and says hello to you. Isn't it? Now this, this is a behavior from the other person. This person has shared a feeling with you. But that feeling has reached you. Or you have been able to articulate that feeling. But there has been a process involved in this. So this hello word reaches your ears, from your ears, it reaches your brain and then from brain it reaches you. So this is again a sensation that is there in the ears, isn't it? This word hello. While this person was saying hello, okay, he also stretched his hand and you shook hands and his hands are very cold. So this is another kind of sensation that you got. So there was one sensation of behavior the other person saying hello in the early morning. There is another sensation of the hands being cold. Isn't it? And you got that sensation also. And say you have some cough in this cold season. You are getting that sensation also. And now you might be apprehending that. Now you have touched this cold hand. Okay, You might sneeze. So you will see that we are getting sensation through these three sources and we read these sensations based on our decision but these sources are there isn't it and we keep on reading the information that we get from the body and we keep on giving meaning this is something that we'll uh, discuss later so please keep on observing this this would be the assignment for today that is time for hindi session